light complexion like Oyibo. And you say, Thus saith the Lord. It's a matter of time, oh. Whether it is the Lord or it is your eyes. It's a matter of time. Because when you come to pass off, I saw the will of God. I will never say you didn't see. You are the one that say you saw. After all, you come back and say, Pastor, I see another one. Oh. This woman, I must say, the woman is, is a devil. I said, come on. What do you mean, a devil? You will not marry a devil in Jesus' name. Oh. Pray. Tell somebody, pray. The Lord will help you. Some people are not committed to their marriage. They are not committed to their spouse. Some are addicted to all kinds of things. People of the world are addicted to drugs. They are addicted to other things. Even in the church, some people are addicted to some other things. Check yourself. Some are addicted to pornography. Some are addicted to masturbation. Some are addicted to lust. Some are addicted to, to food. What is it that you are addicted to? If you are ever going to be addicted to anything, be addicted to your Bible. Be addicted to prayer. And do even those, do them with wisdom. Not, not when they say it is time for food, that's when you remember. That's the time to go and do, to, to go and read Psalm. Uh, is it Psalm 119? Be careful. Now, if you are not married here, can I see your hand up? If you are not married, if I, I know some unmarried people are here. I just want to see if there are really, really young, young people. Okay, I think you're all matured now. God bless you. The next one I want to talk about is very, very sensitive. This one. No matter how good a chef you may be, and you cook the best of food, no matter how clean or neat you may be, and your house is spotless, if this one is not well taken care of, every other thing will be in vain. What is that? It is mostly done in the night. You know what I'm talking about? It is called S-E-X, sex. Somebody say sex. I know you are too holy to say it. <laughs> and your parents didn't tell you it's going to happen when you get married. Please pay attention. It may be a laughing matter, but I can tell you this is one of the major things that has destroyed many homes. Some of the men's program, the women's program, we have handled. We can stand here and tell you many believers' homes have been fixed by the grace of God. Because we look at the spade and we say, this is a spade, and we call it a spade. And we dare to teach directly. And there have been cases where even their husband will call and say, Pastor, thank you for that program. That since the program ended, my spouse has become a new person. The Bible says, you should not defraud your spouse. You should not defraud your spouse, not money now. Except because of fasting and prayer for a season. And even that, the Bible says, it must be with a consent. That means, if you are going to fast and pray, it must be with agreement with your spouse. Before you embark on it, you agree on the duration 
it is for one day, two days, three days, or one year. If your spouse says, yes, go ahead, go ahead. If your spouse says, no way, you better forget about that fasting. Because the crisis that will come on the fasting will destroy the effect of the fasting. The Bible says, men, deal with your wife with wisdom. So that your prayers be not hindered. When there is conflict in the family, prayers are hindered. When you deny your spouse of his or her legitimate marital entitlement, the Bible says you are a thief. Turn to the person next to you and say, are you a thief? Somebody said, and I quote, that I did not know that I had been the source of the problem in my family because I always thought that I can only have a relationship with my, with my husband only when we need baby. That means for as long as you're looking for a baby, you sleep with your spouse. Once the baby come, once you become pregnant, what do you do? Dead end. No road. She went back home, made things right, became a happy person. If you are sick, it's a different thing. Don't deny your sorrow. And please pay attention. Don't say because your wife or your husband is... De you know, I used to think that it's only women that denies the men. But I have also come to realize and understand that men deny their, husband, their wives. There was a particular case that came. And I was wondering, this must be demonic, really demonic. And the woman said... Pastor, when everything failed in the night, I won't even wear anything so that at least my husband will be attracted. This man will not. And when I try to pull him, the man will run under the bed. I'm telling you the truth. You think it's a laughing matter. Somebody's crying. The lady is suffering. Another person came openly. They think they have tried secretly. It won't work. The person doesn't even care. She said, Pastor, I married. I got married because of this thing. If this man will not satisfy me, she won't, he wants to send me out. It's a serious matter. And you are there as a lady. You think you have a weapon. To punish your husband. The Bible says you are a thief. If you die in that situation, you will never get to heaven. Is that serious? Because if the Bible calls it fraud, will thief get to heaven? Will arm robber get to heaven? Will family robber get to heaven? Tell your, the person next to you, don't be a thief. After all times, our time is gone, but I'll try to wrap it up now. Listen to this. Before I wrap it up, even those of you that are old, even at the age of 100, Abraham was still a man. You know what I mean by he was still a man. Even at the age of 90, Sarah was still performing. How old are you? And then you say, eh, you know we are getting old. How old are you? That you are destroying your life, destroying your home, destroying your family. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Some of us, the problem is just dirtiness. Dirtiness. And I can tell by the way some of us live in this church. You brought your children. By the time you get up with your children, the whole place is messed up. 
and you left it like that. When I see things like that, I can tell how you are in your house. You know one of the reasons why I don't eat in people's houses? I'm just going to be honest with you. Because some people are very dirty. And naturally, I get easily irritated. It's not pride or anything. It's just because I get easily irritated. When I see the way some people, whether men or women, handle things, dirtiness, dirtiness, you are the man. You went to the bathroom, and some of you have done it this morning already. You finish using the bathroom, and all you did was just open the door and storm out of the bathroom. What happened to the soap in the bathroom? What happened to the water, the tap water there? It's meant for you to wash your hands. And after you finished, you came out. And then you saw, uh, uh, brother, good luck. <laughs> <And then laughs> Sometimes, I'm telling you the truth, after shaking hands, I look for the nearest place to wash my hands. Ask them in my family. One of the things I won't play with in this church is soap in the bathroom. You come to my house. There is none of the bathroom you get into my house that you won't find soap there. And if you're a guest, please pardon me, it's not pride. It's just that I know some people, they have done the exam, uh, the, what do you call it now, in this nation, the survey. And they realize that men, are more involved with this. Women too, but the percentage is more of men. They just get there, they do their thing, and then they, they go out. They didn't know that the camera was installed to monitor them. And then they just come out of the place. And then your friend is eating. If I'm eating, you put your hand in the food, uh, I'm full immediately. If I didn't see you, wash your hand. Let's be neat. And then women. You are busy in the kitchen. And then the baby is crying. The baby is uh, doing something. You quickly, uh, the, the nose is running. And then you put on truck. And then <laughs> the rice. <laughs> After all, you forgot to put butter in the rice. Am I talking to somebody here today? <laughs> Dirtiness. Some of you men, the same under where you were last week, Monday to Friday. <laughs> the thing is already getting some passenger. And then before you know it, kuru, 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 you know where you scratch. Come on, dirtiness. Sister, your mother back home in the village, when they woke up in the morning, let me ask mothers that are here, where are, where are they? Sister Wachuku, stand up. In the village, when you wake up in the morning, the first thing that you do, man. I'm sorry? Uh, she's not getting it. What's the first thing? Sister Eche, what's the first thing you do? You first sweep your environment. Before you start any kind of cooking, am I, am, I, am I right? Before you start cooking, before you start doing anything, the first thing is you, your environment must look neat and tidy. 
But here, we don't even have to buy a broom. We don't have to bend. I thank God for those women. Their backs didn't break because of that. You, you have the vacuum. Just to do that in boom, 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 it's a trouble. Your dining table. When you get out to eat, it's, only, it's not only you and your children that are eating there now. Roaches and ants are part of the guests at the table. Now we came to your house. I told you of the house I lived in Georgia. Trust me, it's not because we were dirty. That house was infested before we got there. The roaches in that house, if you count them, they'll be close to a million. When we moved out of the place, we had to ensure once we dry clean the cloth, it doesn't go back in, out. That's how we did everything. There are things we have to get rid of. Some of your houses are infested because of dirtiness. Neatness. And if your spouse doesn't like it, why don't you pray and change? And in case you don't know, there is also a spirit that has to do with dirtiness. You think it's just your nature. No, it's, a, it's an evil nature that needed to be dealt with. Some people, it's your mouth, your language, the way you talk. When you talk like this, dead devil, dead devil uh, body will rise up. Your mouth is sharper than two edges sword. And yet, your mouth is not the word of God. Deal with all these things. Examine yourself. That's what the Bible says. And I round up with that. There are more, but our time is gone. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. And I want to look at the first part of it. Maybe let's just look at the whole thing. Uh, because if things are not right in our homes and family, then most likely things are not right with our spiritual life. Verse 5 says, examine yourselves. Whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate. If there is any crisis in your home or family, I may not have been able to mention everything. But whatever it may be, I know there are some of you that the problem in the family, and all this may not apply to you, but in some other places because of childlessness in the family, whatsoever it is, it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let us pray. I have not come to preach today to entertain you, but to make you think deep of your life, of your situation, of your family, and to enable you to know that if things are not right with your family, things may not be right with your spiritual life. Today is not a day to scream and shout in prayer. You examine your own situation. Examine your own family. Examine your own life. If you have interfered in people's family and you have created a problem, you can repent today. And do restitution too where necessary. If you have some baggages you have brought, either from your family or from your friends, you can drop them all at the feet of the cross. If you are under the influence of the spirit of the devil, you can be delivered. If you are the type that don't relate well with your, with your spouse or your in-laws, you can make right your way. If you are the child that have no respect for cultural difference that are not contradictory to the word of God, you can talk to God about it and make things right. If you are selfish and self-centered 
and care less about what becomes of your spouse. Even when your spouse is sick, you must come forth. When your spouse is sorrowful, you must still come forth. Set to that with the Lord right now. If you are not completely separated from the world, your old friends, your old sinner partners, you still communicate with, with your old girlfriend, and you say you are a Christian, deal with that right now. You are not a type that sits down to communicate and communicate well with, with, with your partner. Tell the Lord to touch your heart and to touch your mouth. You're not a good money manager. Deal with that between you and God. You're messing around and messing around with other ladies or other men. No all monger shall enter the kingdom of God. No adulterer, no fornicator will make it to heaven. You are breaking the heart of your spouse. You are making yourself irresponsible. Tell the Lord to help you. Tell the Lord to help you. You have been denying your spouse. You come under all kinds of excuses. You give all kinds of complaints. What's our family planning in there to be done? Go and do it. Marriage is meant for pleasure. Not just for having children alone. Most problems will be easily solved when there is a good relationship at night. When you don't deny one another. Tell the Lord, my home will not break. My marriage will not break. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, all eyes closed. All eyes closed. Camera people, no camera on anybody. Both cameramen, everybody, all eyes closed. You're here today. You've heard the word of God. And you know you have offended your own spouse. One way or the other. I just want to pray for you for grace. To be able to do the right thing. And God has touched your heart. And you know by the grace of God you want to make things right. I want to pray for you. If you just raise up your hand. You know you have done things against your spouse. I just want to pray for you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Put down those hands. Repentance will make us to go to the people we have offended and say, I am sorry. Humility will make us to go and say, I am sorry for all that I have done. And by the grace of God, the grace to do that, the Lord will give unto you. And your, if your spouse is hearing, forgiveness will wipe away the record of the past. As you forgive, as soon as your spouse comes, the grace of God will come. And life will begin afresh in Jesus' name. I want to pray for everybody. No hands going up because of the sensitivity of this issue. Whatever your own case may be, you know your family. You know your condition. If you 
you just quietly lay your hands upon yourself and say, Lord, I'm supposed to enjoy my marriage, not to endure it. I need your intervention. I need your grace. Every work of the devil in my marriage, Father, destroy them. Anything and everything I have secretly inherited and brought into this marriage that has made my marriage unhealthy and unproductive, Father, destroy those things quietly. Just talk to the Lord. I will pray for you, but I want you to talk first. Because it is when you decide to put an end to the existence of the stranger that the stranger will leave. Anything in me, anything about me, walking against the peace and the joy of my home, Father, destroy them now. Destroy them now. If it is my tongue, Father, let my tongue be seasoned with salt, with grace, minister, with salt, ministering grace to those that hear me. Touch my tongue. You touch the tongue of Isaiah. Change my life. You change the life of Saul. Give me a happy home. Give me a happy life. Teach me to live. You are there, you pay attention to all petty, petty things. Father, help me to know how to overlook all that needed to be overlooked. Help me to be patient. Help me to endure with my partner. Talk to the Lord, talk to the Lord, talk to the Lord. You have been wasteful. Your spouse has always been telling you, you are wasteful, you are wasteful. Whether you agree or not, uh, it's not the issue. Deal with that situation. You have not studied your spouse very well. You have not studied your spouse culture either. Tell the Lord to give you the grace to know your spouse better. Marriage and family is like a school. We are growing in it. We are growing in it. We are getting better day by day. You know yourself better. If your wife is sick, and the nature of that sickness is what is making you to think of separation or divorce, why don't you pray for the grace to love your spouse, your wife or husband, in spite of that condition? If you are single, Tell the Lord to give you a happy home. The bone of your bone and the flesh of your flesh. Tell the Lord to give unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, in humility we bow before you. And we declare who is sufficient unto all these things. We have tried to look at just few things among so many things that causes problem and crisis in homes and families that makes us to keep enduring when we're supposed to be enjoying. That things that makes us sorrowful when we're supposed to be joyful. Things that makes us to lose our appetite when we're supposed to be desirous of eating. 
Things that makes us to turn our backs to one another when we are together on the same bed. Things that makes us to regret the day we met our spouse instead of rejoicing and celebrating the day we came together. You know all these things, oh Lord. You know them. Father, you are the solution to all the problems in human life. We repent in those and ashes, O oh Lord. In whatever way we have erred, in whatever way we have wronged ourselves, we repent, Father, and we pray for forgiveness in Jesus' name. O oh Lord, O oh God, I pray. There are things that are happening that are beyond our imagination. Some of us have prayed, even fasted. To get some things taken care of. And yet they persisted. Oh God of heaven, king of glory. Eternal God, everlasting king. I come before thee. I pray unto thee. That all the works of the devil. In every home and in every family. Let them be destroyed in Jesus name. You say shall the prayer be taken from the mighty. Or the lawful captive delivered. But thus says the Lord. Even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I, says the Lord, will contend with him that contend with thee. Father, every spirit, every power of darkness, every principality and power, every rulers of darkness, every spiritual wickedness in high places, contending with our homes and families and children. Father, contend with them now in Jesus' name. Destroy their power. Destroy their walls. Uproot every plantation they have gotten in our families and lives in Jesus' name. Let there be a new beginning. Give us a Christian home. A happy home. A joyful home. A progressive home. Thank you for answering us. In Jesus' name we pray.